Okay, today we're going to be talking about compatible numbers and using them to find the quotient to two-digit divisors. Up to this point, we've only really talked about one-digit divisors, and two-digit divisors can be a little bit more difficult. So we're going to walk through a couple pro uh, problems together. The first problem says, a school needs to buy posters for a fundraiser. They have a budget of $147, and each poster will cost them around or will cost them $13 and this, they want to figure out real quick about how many posters they can purchase for their fundraiser. So we set up the problem 147 divided by 13. That is not an easy problem to do. So we want to, because of the word about, which is one of our clue words for estimating, we are going to round them using compatible numbers, not just rounding, all right? Uh, last time I told you you don't want to touch the divisor. Unfortunately this time with the number 13 we're going to have to change that divisor. So 147 we're immediately going to round that to 150. Uh, it's an easy number to work with and then we have to look at our divisor and say what is a number compatible with 150? So we underline the 1 and the 5, the non-zero digits, 15 and then we look for a number that is compatible with 15 that's close to 13. The first one that jumps out is 10. So we round that 13 to 10. Now we set up the 150 divided by 10. We underline our non-zero digits to give us our basic fact of 15 divided by 1. Now we know 15 divided by 1 is 15. So we write our 15 down. The next thing we can do is we can look at the zeros. Start with the divisor. The divisor has one zero. So does the dividend. So we can cross off those zeros. Therefore, our answer is just 15. But let's do another problem. Let's say uh, we don't want to round that down to 10, but we want to round it up to 15, because 15 and 15 are compatible. So again, we, round our, or we underline our non-zero digits. Underline 15 in the dividend. We underline 15 in the divisor. Now we have 15 divided by 15. Well, any number divided by itself is going to give us the answer of 1. Now, we need to add that 0 because there is no 0 in the uh, divisor, but there is a 0 in the dividend, so they don't cancel each other out. We bring that 0 over to the quotient. All right, so the answer is 10. So if we were going to give an accurate answer, we would say they could buy between 10 and 15 posters with that budget of $147. But which one is closer, the 10 or the 15? The one that's a little bit closer would actually be when we rounded it up to 15, because 15 is a little bit closer to 13 than 10 is. Let's look at another problem. 320 divided by 11. So first, let's go to that, that divisor. What's a number close to 11 that is easy to work with? All right, 10. And then we underline the, the 32 there, the non-zero. What's a number that will go into, or 10 would go into? The answer is 30. So we can't do 30 divided by 10 because we're not rounding 320 to 30, we're rounding 320 down to 300. So then we underline our non-zero digits. 3 and 1. We do the math. 3 divided by 1 is 3. Now we go to our divisor. There's one zero in our divisor, so we can, uh, and there's two zeros in the dividend. So we can cross off one zero on each side. We do have one extra zero. That needs to be brought over to the quotient. So our answer is 30. Let's look at another one. 554 divided by 62. First thing, Let's underline the 6 in 62, and let's underline that five, 55 in 554. So when we do that, we now look for a number that's close to 55 that 6 goes into, and our answer is 54. But we can't round 50, 554 to 54, we have to round it to 540. And we take that 2 off and we make it into a 60. So now we have 540 divided by 60 equals 9. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're looking for compatible numbers. We're not just rounding, we're looking for numbers that work nicely together to make it easier on you. 
And like I said last time, we use this process to give us a, an approximate answer. So when we do the actual problem, for instance, the last one we did, we should get a number somewhere near 9. If you have a number like 16 or 18, you know you did something wrong. If you have a number like 7 or 8, you did something correct and your answer is reasonable. So we're going to try a couple on our own.